the pattern on the cover of the spin effects tool shows you which template we are using spin effects number one is this shape inside this paperwork we show you some different patterns that you can make using that one template we also explain how to sew this template very easy it's eight steps and I'll show you how to do that now to get the best results I suggest that you mark reference lines using our crosshair ruler to put those onto your fabric we can mark four as in a four patch square we can put those four lines on point as in a quarter square triangle we can have eight reference lines 16 reference lines and 32 reference lines you can also use our six point crosshair ruler and get six twelve and twenty four reference lines I'm going to sew a simple block using spin effects number one just using the four crosshair reference lines I've brought my threads up to begin with and I'm just going to sew around we're lining up our reference lines one to this reference line and two lines matching with the lines that run across the center of the block this makes it possible to get designs that repeat around in a circle style and you end up at the where you began you may notice I have stable tape on this template and that helps that template stay in place on the fabric I'm going to turn my template leaving the fabric where it is and making sure these reference lines are lined up and we'll sew the next one we like you to learn using our rotating templates learning to turn your template and not turn your fabric if you are working on a large quilt you do not want to be turning that quilt round and round in circles if you are working on a small area like this it's quite all right to turn the fabric but it's best to learn how to do it both ways we're back at the beginning turn the template again lining up the reference line here and there and here we're going to sew the next one as you can see this is a quick design to sew but you can do a lot more with a spin effects template than sew this pattern so this is being sewn on a four point or four rotation when we get back to the beginning we'll rotate once more and the design will be complete we will then sew the tails in on our threads when we're done I'm not pressing hard down on my template it's just a gentle hold and we just move along moving fabric and template at the same time you will find your own rhythm you will find your own speed that you like to go at and now we're back at the beginning and we'll stop here you may notice we have a key in this template our keys are designed to be removed and therefore we can take that template away and put another template in there so in this case I'm going to take the three and a half inch number one spin effects put that back in place align my lines up and I'll put a small spin effects inside each of these four and you can use all of the spin effects from three and a half inch to eleven and a half inch inside each other to give you different designs finish sewing it turn it round the small one works beautifully if you're using it in small squares to fill in squares the sizes are all designed and measured to fit inside standard block sizes that we built with they're also designed to work with each other so we'll sew the next one up the top just going to move that thread out of my way turn again make sure we're lined up it's very quick to check your reference lines to make sure they're in place and it does give you an accurate design so there is our last rotation being sewn in I'll bring the threads up and show you how to tie off the ends to sew the tails in I'm going to use a self-threading needle 
which has a slot at the top of the needle and that's where the thread's going. So you're not actually threading this needle through the eye. I'm going to hold the needle, take the two tails together, push them down and now my needle is threaded. I'm then going to take the needle and make a knot in the threads. I want that knot to be somewhere between a quarter of an inch and half an inch from where it comes out of the fabric. And then we will just simply take the needle and thread it back into the batting. So I've just woven it through the batting, going up and going up and down. Pull that thread, and now my tails are here. And we'll just take a pair of scissors and cut those tails off. For the on-point block, I could use the seven and a half inch, and when I sew it, we will have it coming to about here. That will give me a small inside piece, which will look fine. But if I use the nine and a half inch, I can get it going further out to the edges of the block. If I want to sew that as eight points, I don't have enough fabric to sew it in. So we're going to use this one on point. I'm going to bring the tails up. The easy way to do this is lower the needle, lift your foot, pull the thread and your bobbin thread comes up. And we're just going to sew this four times, making sure our reference lines are aligned to start with. Away we go. We can use spin effects to fill in blocks. We can have them filled where our pattern is uh, more complex, more simplex, depending on what we want. We can use different sizes together. And we're back to the beginning. We're going to turn it round again. We can also use spin effects to make borders. We can use it to uh, quilt sashings. So, so much we can do with it. We have 16 different designs in spin effects. All of the templates work in the same manner, but they give you a different look. Some are more uh, floral looking than others. Some are far more complex than others. So that's our first two. We'll do the one coming across at 90 degrees. I've finished sewing the nine and a half inch spin effects. I've then put a seven and a half inch spin effects. I'll take the key out. I will now use five and a half inch spin effects and I'll put a five and a half inch side, this one. Just remember to re use your reference lines and we'll put a smaller one inside. When we get to here, we'll stop. We can turn the fabric if you want, or turn the template. Either way works. We'll sew the next one. And then when I finish these, I'll put the three and a half inch side, this one. Bill is filming right over my shoulder and he can see how I, what I'm seeing. What we, I can see is where my needle goes into the fabric. That is important to me. I need to be able to stop on a line, exactly on a line, and I have no difficulty doing that with the space that's available for you to see through in our foot. I've changed the template to the three and a half inch and I'll put one more inside here. When we're working with rulers and templates, our rulers are giving us the guide. So we don't need to see where we've, we're traveling to because the ruler is going to put us in that correct position. What we do need to be able to see through the hole in the foot is where our last stitch is going to go. So we're just going to move back up to the center here and I can see exactly where my needle is going in right in the position where I want it to. I'll finish sewing these and then this sample will be finished. You can fill in the space around the, around the outer edges with cross hatching, 
You could use circles on quilts to put circles in the outer edge. You can use our mini fills. There's many ways of filling that space in here. But I will show you another method of finish, filling that space using the spin effects. Once I've done finished this one. And we'll finish off these ends. And then I'll show you a way of filling out this space using the spin effects. I'm going to use spin effects number one in the 11 and a half inch size to create a cross curved cross hatch in here. I've put a pin through the center, a stitching line disc over that pin, and my template, when it sits on here, make sure that each time we rotate, it's sitting nestled against that nicely at the top. Don't have it sitting out here because it will alter the way this works. I've also put a mark on my template here. I've got a piece of tape and I've just drawn a line on it in black so that you can see it. That's where I'm going to place my spacing gauge. So I'm going to bring my thread up here, which is where my template, round, roughly where my template's going to touch. And make sure that I've got the bobbin thread brought up. And just move those threads out of the way. It's just another way to make use of a template. My template's nesting against that stitching line disc. Space engage I'm going to use touching the line that I drew on the template and touching that stitching line here. So we're now going to sew up the template and we're going to stitch this out beyond where my cutoff line would be. So it will be in my seam allowance. I'm going to sew back now, keeping the template in place and that way I can backtrack on this line beautifully. And when I get to the bottom, down here, I'm going to stop sewing on the line. I'm going to rotate the template, but I'm going to make sure it still nestles in the top against that stitching line disc. Use the spacing gauge against the black line and the stitch line. I have to sew up here just a few stitches until it touches the foot touches the template. And now we're going to sew back out again. I'm going to go back into the center. We're going to do the same on the other side. So there's two ways of getting around. I can sew down along the stitching line down here. Just backtrack along here, or I could break the threads, whichever you prefer. We're going to now come up here. But what we're going to do is be working from this side. So I have to transfer this line over to this side of the template. To do that, I will just take another piece of tape. You can do this all at once when you do the first part. It doesn't have to be a piece of tape, it just shows up the line better for me. And I'm just going to use one of the templates, line it up, make sure it's lined up all the way across. So I'm just using that straight edge of the template and I'm going to put a piece of tape on this side. And then I'm going to draw that little black line. And I will cut the piece of tape off out of the middle. You can just draw the line on if you want. So now we're going to work on this side. Make sure that the bottom of the template is nesting in the right place against the stitching line disc. And it's telling me I've sewn up too high here, so that's fine, I'll just sew back down. Bringing it round. Keep it nesting in the right place and line up that spacing gauge again. Now we're going to be able to sew out. Once you've marked it, the markings are there and you can do the whole block from one area to the next. You can leave those markings on there until you're finished kneading it. You can also put those markings on with a whiteboard marker and then erase them when you don't need them anymore. We need to go back a couple more stitches so we get to that line. We're now going to turn the template again, making sure that that is nesting at the top bringing in our spacing gauge in line here 
and I'll just sew up here, get the template and come around. Stop on the line and I will sew those threads in. This is our finished four point spin effects using seven and a half and three and a half. And this is the finished spin effects where we've used three and a half, five and a half, seven and a half, nine and a half inch, and we've used our eleven and a half inch to put a fill in the background. This block is going to be an eight point spin effects. I'm using the seven and a half inch. And for this block, I will use do it where I'm going to turn my template on the fabric and instead of going from one side and doing the opposite, I'm going to work my way around the block. So we finish this one, stopping exactly in the center, lining up those reference lines, and we're going to sew the next one. As I said, we can do this as a 16 point block, an 8 point block, 32 point, 6, 12 and 24 points. The 6 and 12 point and 24 point blocks work really well when we're working in hexagons because they're working on the same angles as a hexagon. The hexagon's working on a 15, 30 and 60 degree reference line and the um, eight points are working on a 45, 22.5 and 11.25. So when you're working in hexagon shapes, equilateral triangles, if you have the six point crosshair ruler, those points will match with the points of the hexagon and the equilateral triangle. Whereas the eight points match when we're breaking up a square and we're breaking it up using um, the 45 degree, 90 degree and 22.5 degree marks. And that's why we have the different crosshair rulers. So instead of us working opposites this way, which is the way I've shown you in the instructions, we're working around following those reference lines. As you can see, it doesn't take very long to complete one of these designs. You can put them in blocks, you can work them halfway using them for a border, you can work them from side to side on a block using a smaller one and putting just a half on each straight line of the outer edge of a block. And we have one more to go. That is finished and all we have to do is tie off our ends. And this is the finished eight point spin effects.